Today is all about one of Rob Liefeld's most enduring creator-owned characters, Profit. On a 2021 episode of Rob Liefeld's Rob Servations podcast, he said that Mark Guggenheim had finished the script for the Profit film and that they'd moved ahead enough in development for casting to be underway, although no one was revealed yet. So with that said, it's a perfect time to talk about Profit. Thanks for watching JLS Comics. If you do like the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I upload videos just like this every week. All right, let's jump into the story. In the Profit Cable crossover book, Rob Liefeld said that Profit was originally to be featured in a Marvel X-Force story arc that found Profit assuming the role of a future cop from Cable's timeline. He was to have been dispatched from the 20th century with orders to capture Cable and return him to the Time Lord named Kang the Conqueror. By the time I was to begin telling that story though, Image Comics had exploded onto the scene and my attention was drawn away from Cable and company. I took Profit with me and spent the last five years far away from Cable, X-Force, and Marvel Comics. And then in July of 1994's Wizard Magazine issue 35, Rob revealed that the plan for Profit was for him to show up in the X-Force comic book around issue 6 or 7, and that the cover for Youngblood 2 originally featured X-Force members instead of Youngblood. In that same Wizard Magazine issue, Liefeld also said that Prophet was inspired by Gene Roddenberry and Steven Spielberg. Liefeld loves sci-fi, Star Wars, and Planet of the Apes and such, and as it's quoted in the Wizard Magazine issue, one day I thought to myself, what if these guys were from the future? They came to the past to show us everything that we will have in the future, sort of like blueprints. That, he says, is how I got the idea for Prophet. And here's Prophet's story. A scientist from the future named Dr. Garnett Wells traveled back in time to 1937 Germany. Wells brought his advanced science and technology with him and began his experiments, pulling in the downtrodden and his test subjects. And that's when he found Jonathan Taylor Prophet. John's parents had instilled in him deep religious beliefs. But his father, in wartime Germany, was murdered by the Fuhrer's men, and Prophet became the man of the house, forced to take care of his mother and his younger brother. Prophet was born December 22, 1920, so despite growing up really fast, he was just 17 years old around this time. John took on random work to put food on the table, and so when the opportunity came with Dr. Wells, he simply couldn't say no. Wells was able to mutate Prophet's DNA, giving him superhuman strength, stamina, and speed, and then Wells outfitted Prophet with an outlandish costume and advanced weaponry and turned John Prophet into a super soldier, the Ubermensch. Prophet made enough money working with Wells that he was able to get his mother and brother out of wartime Germany and into the United States for safety. During this time, Prophet also befriended Wells' lab assistant, Jackson Kirby, who we'll hear more about in a moment. At some point, Prophet was even given his own orbital satellite called DOCC, meaning Direct Orbiting Communications Command, which proved pivotal to Prophet's health as it was through this that he was able to repair his biomechanical body. In 1995's Prophet Babe Watch special, Dr. Wells was hiding out at his compound in Antarctica, watching Prophet die in ancient Roman gladiatorial matches inside the device against lions, and when that happened, he would resurrect Prophet with this resurrection machine, the stasis chamber that Prophet was stored in. And through these means of experimentation, Prophet lived countless lifetimes, and with each one, he grew stronger. Wells made Prophet a female at one time and sent her, as La Pucelle, to fight in Orleans, France in 1429, wielding a battle axe atop a mighty steed. But despite her victories, she was brought before the court of King Charles and charged with witchcraft against God and against the crown. This version of Prophet was Joan of Arc. During the 1940s, the Fuhrer himself learned about this ubermensch, and he ordered his Third Reich to track Wells and Prophet down. Prophet was eventually put into stasis, and over the years, he was essentially rented out and leased as a one-man army. For example, Prophet was used in Vietnam against the North Vietnamese. Prophet had these neuromanipulative implants in his head that would erase his missions, and which also required him to be put back in stasis each time for that repair. He was the archetype of a man out of time, a stranger in a strange land a la Captain America, Rip Van Winkle, and yes, Planet of the Apes. Perhaps the only things still familiar to him during this time were his religious beliefs and the King James Bible passages his father had instilled in him as a boy. In publishing chronology, Prophet first appeared in the second issue of Rob Liefeld and Image Comics' Young Blood series, a brand new exciting publishing house at the time that was shaking up the comics industry of the 90s. Amidst the Kirby crackle and punchy purples and greens, the comics cover teased in a very Kirby-esque way, a Prophet cometh. In that issue, Prophet was found in a cryogenic animation chamber at a gate, that's genetic and technology engineering, facility in Berlin, East Germany, where he'd been suspended for over 50 years. 
Sentinel's Young Blood Away team met up with the medical team, and they were tasked with escorting the stasis chamber with Prophet's dormant body inside, along with Wells' research and equipment, safely back to the U.S. for further experimentation. Two of the Young Blood members, Combat and Cougar, were inspecting that stasis chamber when they discovered a time lock on it. And when Cooper touched the lock, the stasis glass shattered and John Prophet emerged, with smoke and ash wafting eerily from the chamber rubble around him. Prophet went into kill mode as his programming gave him his prime directive, Eliminate Disciples. He immediately attacked Combat and Cougar, thinking that they were disciples. Cougar went down fast, and Combat managed to get a few hits on Prophet before he took him out, and this just as Sentinel and Riptide also attacked the Awakened Warrior. This gave their tank Brahma an opening for a nasty right hook to Prophet's face. So this is where the story went truly intergalactic. It was a villain named Lord Darkthorn who ruled over a planet called Decay. Darkthorn's followers were called Disciples, and this is who Prophet was tasked with taking out and who he thought that Youngblood was when he first woke up. At the gate facility, the actual Disciples showed up, channeling their best Gene Roddenberry Borg impression, saying, Resistance is futile. You will be assimilated. These were Darkthorn's Disciples of Doom, and as Prophet explained to Youngblood, a threat to all humanity. And suddenly, the Berserkers also showed up, led by Wells' former lab assistant and Prophet's friend, Kirby. But these new entrants were not enough. In a mere 19 minutes, the Disciples wiped them all out. Though he was bloody beaten in his gear and tatters, Prophet rose. He was beaten, but not defeated. He attacked the Disciples. Prophet was designed to be more than their equal. This fight was Prophet's destiny. Man against machine. Good versus evil. While this was happening, Youngblood's diehard went to the main Youngblood team and told them that there was an incident involving the away team. When they got there, 10 hours later, the gate lab was destroyed and yet Prophet was still standing. Again, the Disciples attacked, and so Prophet teamed up with the main Youngblood team to fight them once more. Then Prophet explained to Shaft and Chapel that the Disciples were made with future science and teleported to their location via a transportation device called a crash tunnel. And it was there at the other end of the tunnel that they'd find that Youngblood away team. So Shaft dispatched Diehard and Bedrock to check out the crash tunnel. What they found on the other side of the wormhole-like tunnel was the planet Decay and its ruler Darkthorn, the very villain who dispatched the Disciples to do his bidding. Darkthorn himself came through the tunnel and took Prophet down and faced off against the entirety of the Youngblood team while also summoning forth a legion of winged demons. They defeated Darkthorn and pushed him back through the crash tunnel before it collapsed, saving the day, but barely. Prophet's next appearance was in the 1993 industry-shaking event called Deathmate, where Images Void and Valiant Comics Solar touched and merged the two universes together. It was only two people with the gift of foresight that knew this new reality was not as it should be, and those two men were Jeff McHenry, the Geomancer, and John Prophet. It was they who needed to gather all the heroes of this new mixed reality in order to save all of time. Prophet joined up with a team called Night Strike, and then eventually ended up finding Solar, and they discovered that Master Dark was behind it all, and then reality was saved. In the latter part of 1993, Rob Liefeld and Dan Panosian gave Prophet his own title. Now Prophet found himself with his friend Kirby and trying to re-establish his link with the DOCC station while figuring out this new world he was thrust into. In this title, he met an FBI liaison named Mary McCormick that he thought was his long-lost love. Mary had young Bud and Bloodstrike strike teams on standby for when they found Prophet's location. She could dispatch the teams to bring him in. So that's how Prophet, Kirby, and Bloodstrike ended up battling while at a gate facility. Meanwhile, another threat appeared in a very Terminator-esque way. In a gritty city alley, a massive energy formed, and from within that massive energy emerged a battle angel Alita-looking lady named Judas. And there she declared, I will fulfill my destiny. I will kill Prophet. She had to kill Prophet to prevent him from stopping the future from unfolding the way Darkthorn wanted. Director Omen, head of a Ragnarok R&D facility in Colorado, was prophesized to be the one to bring about the Disciple program that he was working with with Lord Darkthorn, and they were prophesized to help facilitate bringing about that future fate. Meanwhile, Mary McCormick and her team had managed to subdue Prophet and Kirby, and while Noble and Director Omen were trying to figure out Prophet, they ran him through a VR simulator to see how his body reacted. But Prophet flatlined himself, allowing himself to exit the VR program, so he stole a car and escaped from Gate. This was also around the time that Dan Panosian came off the book and the legendary Stephen Platt took his place. Platt was starting to be late getting the art in by deadline, and so issue 7 was resolicited for September of that year. In that gap of time, a file copy was released as Prophet Issue 0. And the Zero issue was originally intended as a Prophet Unleashed comic book miniseries that never saw print, so the story was made as the Zero issue to fill that gap between issues 6 and 7. And that Zero Issue of Prophet features Prophet and Kirby holed up in a new converted church cathedral HQ. 
Profit's DOCC was under attack, and as he says, that's his lifeline, and he needs it to download, repair, and regulate himself. They borrowed a spaceship from an apprehensive shaft of Youngblood to head into near-Earth orbit to investigate. And so inside the DOCC station, they found a guy named Exile tearing everything apart, claiming to be another product of Dr. Wells' experiments. Exile had gone through the same cryostasis procedures that Prophet had. However, when Exile was suspended in animation, he was also conscious during that entire time. So his resentment, jealousy, and rage built up during that long, torturous, and seemingly never-ending time. Prophet continued to fight Judas. He also had to battle with a cloaked profane crusader known as Crypt. Crypt was commissioned by Chapel, and Chapel had killed himself so he could take over hell from Lucifer. In Youngblood Strike File 8, Crypt broke into Gates' facility in an attempt to murder Prophet, and that's when we find out that Director Omen had made a Prophet clone. Prophet also fought with Wargame in the Bloodstrike title. And Wargame had told Prophet that in the year 2043, he and Prophet would battle. That this is what Wells had traveled back in time to prevent. That this was Prophet's true destiny, to stop Darkthorn and to stop the Great War. Prophet made this revelation as Crypt broke in and stabbed Wargame, and then Prophet and Bloodstrike broke free of their confinement. Almost immediately, Prophet and Crypt fought till a lady named Athena showed up to save him and Bloodstrike from this newest threat. All of this while still trying to stay connected to DOCC. In Prophet Issue 9, Prophet was hiding out with Kirby in Sun Valley, Idaho, having nightmares about Crypt, while General Emerson's forces quickly found them and pursued Prophet and Kirby's APC from the air. They got to a safe haven, a church run by Father Elias, but it wasn't long before Judas burst through the church window, her blue wings guiding her and her foot right to Prophet's face. It turns out that Father Elias is the one who raised Judas, but it happened in the future. Judas said that in the future, when she was just five, Darkthorn's disciples had captured her and made her a slave. And it was Prophet who rescued her and cared for her and loved her, but she was again captured by the disciples. And this time, Prophet never came back for her. And over time, her hatred of the disciples turned to devotion, all because she felt like Prophet abandoned her as a child. Then DS9 showed up and blew her up, but Crypt was disappointed that Judas had failed. Kirby attacked first, but Crypt murdered him, smashing Kirby's face into the ground. Prophet now had a lightsaber, and he used it against Crypt's shield and battle axe, and even while the gates of hell opened to let Chapel's demon legion spill forth on Earth, they fought. Prophet learned that Crypt was actually a version of himself from the future, an impure version of himself, tainted by bloodlust and death. At the end of Extreme Sacrifice, Prophet stood with the heroes of Earth, young blood, new men supreme to defeat Chapel. But now Kirby had died, and so Prophet was on his own, launching out into a new volume, a new chapter of his life, seeking more answers. And then, Judas was able to bring Crypt back from the dead in the Crypt miniseries in 1995. Sort of. His soul was kept in a jar on her hip. In the future, John was now called Absolution, and he would fight against his corrupted self, Crypt. Prophet said he went back for Judas to save her the second time, but she was already gone. Crypt had taken Prophet down, but wanted Judas to kill him. So she took up a blade and instead plunged it deep into Crypt's neck, and then quickly used a vial Prophet gave her to destroy his blackened soul for good. But it switched their bodies and so Prophet's soul entered Crypt's body and that's how Prophet became Crypt at the hands of Judas and herself. So that he took up his weapon and shot Judas in the stomach. In another event called Extreme Apocalypse, it's revealed that Supreme and the Berserkers are also creations of Dr. Wells. And Wells was now back on the planet Decay. Darkthorn was planning to invade Earth and so Psystorm and Grey of the Berserkers went to Prophet to help stop Darkthorn. They all went through a crash tunnel to the planet Decay. One of Darkthorn's disciples had plunged a blade into Supreme's back that was channeling his power to make the crash tunnel big enough for the invasion forces on Decay. And so because of this, Prophet ended up battling with Supreme. Supreme managed to cut off Prophet's connection to his space station uplink while Kid Supreme saved the Berserkers. But then Darkthorn took over Prophet's mind and had him stab Supreme, releasing the energy to fully open the crash tunnel. When Prophet believed he killed Supreme, he ended up fighting with glory. But Prophet was able to free himself of Darkthorn's control, and instead he fought with Brigade. Then Dr. Wells charged up Prophet with tons of energy and transferred it to Supreme, who then took down Darkthorn by destroying his fortress. Prophet then got a second volume in 1995, written by Chuck Dixon and drawn by Stephen Platt. Prophet changed out his baguette headgear for a metal one. He was also now hiding out in the Arctic away from mankind, which is when a Kirby from a different place in the time stream contacted him. As this Kirby disappeared, Dr. Wells appeared before Prophet, summoning him on an adventure in time to save his friend Kirby. This adventure took him far into the future where he confronted Rigo Spire, and later Wells wiped the programming from Prophet with help from the new gene in the DNA of the new men in order to save him. Then during the Extreme Destroyer event, Prophet helped fight against Imperion and the Keep. Prophet then hooked up with a lady named Silence at a Youngblood safe house. When one of Omen's teams captured Kirby and killed Wells, Prophet teamed up with Youngblood to defeat Director Omen and his shock troops. 
Prophet managed to integrate Wells' consciousness into the DOCC programming. Prophet met with the angelic Magda, who gave him the legendary Sword of Excalibur in order to defeat Drac Mordred, the Lord of Vampires. Magda sacrificed herself so that the vampire lord would spare Prophet. At the end, Prophet awoke in his house with a new black cat and a copy of Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night Dream splayed open. In the Super Soldier's two-parter, Prophet and Chapel were working directly for the US president as agents Alpha and Bravo, and they were dispatched to take out the cult of Hayakama. Prophet had a few crossovers next. Like in 96, he teamed up with a fallen angel from God's war host, trapped on Earth named Evangeline, and the two of them fought the Archangel Michael. In 97, universes crossed again as Prophet and Cable met. Rob Liefeld had helped Marvel Comics relaunch Captain America and the Avengers for an event called Heroes Reborn, and so, as a bonus, he was granted permission to tell the story of his two creations finally meeting each other. Crypt was still hunting Prophet through time, and the energy spikes from the crash tunnels caught the attention of Cable and Domino, and so they all had their adventure, which brought them to the 30th century and the doorstep of the time traveler known as Kang. At the end of time, near the rocks housing a cosmic cube teeming with primordial energy, the three heroes battled Kang and Crypt. Cable ended up trapping Kang inside the cosmic cube, while Prophet punched Crypt so hard that he fell out of Kang's citadel and then disappeared somewhere in space and time. With Domino saved and reality preserved, they all parted ways as friends. Another relaunch was attempted in early 2000's Prophet Legacy, which used a Todd McFarlane art piece as a variant cover, which had originally been made for a 1995 Skybox Prophet collector's card set. It's there we meet Joanna Prophet from 3025 AD in Neotown, formerly New York City. She was a member of The Prophets, an order 500 years old dedicated to the teachings of John Prophet. Joanna was created in a lab 18 years prior to the story using DNA from the original John Prophet. She was an officer working the streets to take down the hardwires. In 2025, Dr. Heinrich Lang discovered Prophet frozen in the ice, and they had resurrected him and kept him in containment, and that's all that story that we got. And then in Nitrogen Extreme Forces, Joanna Prophet and John Prophet battled with Crypt, and he ended up cutting off Joanna's arm, so Gideon and Jericho from her time tried to port her back. In 2012, Brandon Graham took over the title. Graham's book was a drastic reboot, however the new series began in issue 21 where Liefeld's volume 1 left off, and it featured a completely new backstory and a world for Space Conan, I mean John Prophet. In the third age of man, 10,000 years in the future, humans and transhuman cultures had destroyed, assimilated, or consumed everything they could, but they wanted more. The more their empire expanded, the more clones they made to serve them, and as they moved into harsher places, they made these clones built from the DNA of ancient supermen to go forth and ready new cultures for takeover by man. They were aggressive and ruthless and could take entire star systems on their own. This was the age of the prophets. And on these new planets, the prophets ruled and grew and eventually evolved on their own. The lord of the wolf riot star, Jonathan Prophet, was the one to begin rebellion against the imperial rule that spread throughout the entire star system. And when the Empire fell, the slaves and clones made it all their own. And before the Empire was completely gone, they hid super soldiers in cryosleep in secret hidden pods, waiting for years to be awoken once again. This new book revolved around these multiple clones of Prophet, all on different trajectories through a vastly unfamiliar landscape of insectoid, larval, alien creatures that were predatorial, parasitic, and wholly unfamiliar. They used technology that was techno-organic, futuristic, and yet still seemingly primitive. That said, these stories were still about a stranger in a strange land. And the stories were told through the lens of three different prophet clones, all converging on the God Satellite above the Tower of Thylu Va, which, when restarted, would awaken the Earth Empire once more. They had to travel through and fight with these alien creatures. There was a prophet with a tail, an old man prophet, and even some diehard androids that they met along the way, as well as some helpers and friends. There was Sleeping Man, the Mammoth, dormant and floating in orbit, an Arch Mother from a Nephilim womb ship, an Empire Mother, a horrific death maze, and the four-armed Lord Mytox and his clone army. And then in Prophet Earth War, the Prophets took a starship they stole from the Pirate Lords to the Green Hills of Earth and landed as their forces amassed around them for the coming Earth War against Arc Lord Mutox and his clone army. The combined might of the Crystal Blast and the Free Armies toppled the defenses of Earth Empire, and Arc Lord Mutox and Empire Mind Mother took their crystal high above the battle into empty space, piercing a veil to a new world, and there they met glory. Back on the surface, old man, Prophet climbed the tower once more to take out the God Satellite. And then finally, in Earth War Issue 6, the Prophets were able to take down the Earth Empire once and for all. Glory came to Earth, saved them, and destroyed the Earth Empire's tower, and thus ended the comic book story of Prophet for now. And with that, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.